As promised, I am here with a guy who is X bio says media personality, but he it should say the biggest me- media personality in Chicago. He is the host of ESPN 1000's The Cap and J Hood Show. Of what in the hell are we doing? He is streaming on, what is the, the show called uh, that you're streaming? The Recap on YouTube. Right and there it, behind me, the Recap on YouTube. We I put, love it. Uh, Recaps after every Cubs, Sox, Bears, Bulls game. We have a bunch of Bears shows. We have a White Sox podcast with Ryan McGuffey and Brian Anderson. We have a Cubs podcast with Gordon Wittenmeyer, our Bulls with Joe Colley. So tons of content. My gosh, it's a conglomerate. It's it's uh, You started your own network, and it's outstanding with all that talent. So congratulations on that and everything else that you've accomplished in your career. I really appreciate you being here, Mr. Happy. Kaplan. Thanks for asking. You bet. Hey, uh, I want to focus on the Chicago Bears because this show is dedicated to the Bears. And I got to begin with Matt Eberflus. You did a weekly show during the season with Matt every Monday morning before his public press conference. What did you get out of Matt Eberflus during those weeks, those weekly conversations you had with him? Uh, unfortunately, not a lot. That's the problem. Um, you know, I heard Rex Ryan say on Mike Greenberg's great show, Get Up, that he believes that Matt, this was before, obviously, Matt got fired, that Matt should never go to the podium again, take the fine, and you're just not good at that. And he was not good at that particular aspect of his job. He just wasn't. Uh, Jonathan Hood and I tried very, very hard because – we know they're a partner at ESPN 1000. The Bears games air there. We're the home of the Bears. Uh, we try to be nice and friendly and welcoming. The problem was he wouldn't give you anything. Literally. Hey, Coach, is the sky blue? We just got to execute better. Coach, is two plus two, four. We just got to execute better, right? And it just wasn't his thing. We tried hard. He tried. Good person. Just not a very good head football coach. I love the looks Jay Hood would give to you. I oh, watch uh, on YouTube and he's just like looking at you saying, is he doing this again? It was, <laughs> was great. unbelievable. And Hoodie would look at me like, really? And then, you know, there were times because I've always said this. I'm not broadcasting for Matt Eberflus or the GM or the owner or Tom Ricketts or whoever it is in town, Jerry Roger. I always believed I wasn't a pro athlete. I wasn't a former bear. I believe that I am broadcasting for every person out there that is kind enough to honor me by listening, watching, interacting with our content. And so if I get an opportunity and Matt Eberflew says, we didn't need a timeout before the Hail Mary. Well, that's bullshit. Sorry if I couldn't swear. No, you can swear. You had Tyreek Stevenson up in the corner playing with the fans. What are you talking about? And, you know, then he calls in a few weeks ago with me and Hoodie, and phone's breaking up. Hoodie says, we'll put him on hold. He comes back. Sorry, guys. Phone starts breaking up again, and I say to him, Coach, your cell phone's as bad as the offense right now. All right, we'll put him on hold. and Of course, that went viral. Yeah, but I, I posted it on my ex account, and yeah, I got, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of hits on it. It was a priceless moment, and I want to give you credit because I think you deserve at least a smidgen of credit at exposing the guy. And I hate to kick a guy when he's down, but clearly he was ineffective, a terrible communicator, and you helped to expose that further than just the press conferences that he had. Uh, so congratulations to you and helping to kick that guy out of town. Yeah, I appreciate you saying it. Again, I don't wish someone to lose their job, but let's also be fair. This is pro sports. He's making $5 million a year, and he has two more years to get paid. So, yep. you know, when, when they come out and say, well, we didn't want to fire the guy on Thanksgiving. Really? Because the Bulls fired Scott Skiles and Tim Floyd or Bill Cartwright and Tim Floyd on Christmas Eve. I had to cover those press conferences. It's pro sports, man. It's a big boy league. It is what it is. So there's a difference firing him after you let him do a Zoom conference on Friday, then Thursday night going, Matt, don't come in tomorrow. It's it's not working. We appreciate you. You'll get your money. And thanks a lot. 
Yep, exactly. And that's a good segue to the press conference Kevin Warren and Ryan Poles held. I got to tell you, that was one of the worst that's ever come out of that organization. I was actually embarrassed to be a Chicago Bears fan. What were your impressions of it? Yeah, I was highly disappointed in the press conference because they cut off questions at the end. I thought, I think it was Colleen Kane asked a really good question, had a follow-up, and they're gone. Out. Mm -hmm. um, look, I'm not expecting them, and I am a Ryan Poles guy. I think he's a really good GM. He looked like he was in a hostage video in that press conference. Yes, I, all I want to hear is Ryan's our GM. He will be leading the search. He will bring his choice to us. And as president and owner, chairman of the board, we will give him our thoughts and approve it if we think it's the right thing. But it should be Ryan Poles who makes the pick. So then if it doesn't work out, you could say, Ryan, we let you pick your guy, and it did not work out, period. Right. Or, hey, man, we're giving you a brand-new contract with a whole lot of green in it because you did a great job. Well, so if it works out, Kevin Warren could take the credit with George, and it doesn't work out, Ryan gets hung out to dry. I think that's bullshit. Yeah, and I hate to be critical of Kevin Warren, but I, when he came in, when he was announced, I was happy because I saw the, uh, I think it was on HBO, they did a feature on him on the old Brian Gumbo show, and he was Big Ten commissioner at the time, and it was clear that this guy was articulate, smart, he got the big TV deal for the Big Ten, he had other accomplishments in life, he had a childhood injury, that he was uh, courageous enough and had the fortitude to overcome and ends up playing basketball. But then he comes to the Chicago Bears, and we're regressing with the progress on the stadium and his performance at that press conference where he started saying, I this, I that, I that. It was about him. When I started this journey 20 months ago, I knew there would be days uh, like this that would be challenging. And now it seems to me like perhaps his personality is too big for this team. Your thoughts? Yeah, I just he was brought here to get a stadium built. I don't want him in football operations. Yes, he's the president of the team. Yes, he's Ryan's boss. But this should be who my GM, it's like an athletic director. I've never understood, and I was a college coach for four years. I've never understood when you're going to hire a new head basketball coach or a new head football coach that you're going to have a lady from the theater department and a guy from the English department and a lady from HR and a lady from here and a guy from that department. And they're all going to sit in a room and interview the candidates. What the hell do they know about coaching college basketball? Nothing. And it's the same thing with we're going to put a committee together. They said this at the press conference, Aldo. They said we got to put a committee to get. No, you don't. Ryan Poles is paid well. Ryan Poles has a great resume. He started to do a really good job building this team back. They should have seven wins. You don't lose the Washington game, the block field goal at the end of the Green Bay game, and give them one other, whether that's Indianapolis, whether if you don't lose the Hail Mary, maybe you don't lose to a lousy New England team. I mean, they should be at the worst, seven and five. And instead, here they sit at four and eight, and their season is over. And I think that's truly pathetic. Uh, saving grace from that press conference was Thomas Brown's appearance because he is impressing the heck out of me. And listen to what he said, this 20-second soundbite I have from today's press conference when he was asked about Caleb Williams's growth and was he concerned that now he has more responsibilities, can he develop Caleb as quickly as needed? Well, I would say first off, uh, I am not the sole person responsible for Caleb's development. He has a big part in that. Um, obviously, I've been charged with kind of leading the way with him and the team now as well. Uh, but I think his response has been awesome. Uh, my job is to be an effective communicator, uh, be honest and be direct about what he's doing well, what he's not doing well. And I have the same exact message for the team. Cap, I hope you do a weekly show with this guy. He is tremendous, isn't he? He's really good. But here's my question. You got, finally, you've been around as long as I have. North has been around as long as I have or longer. You have seen how many failed quarterbacks. I think we finally got it right, and we have the guy. Are you entrusting the development and emergence of Caleb Williams to as much as I love listening to Thomas Brown? You're making him the head coach? I'm not. I need someone who's far more proven. 
whether that is Mike Vrabel, Bill Belichick, Brian Flores, Arthur Smith, whoever it is, or Ben Johnson, whoever you go get is going to be more experienced than Thomas. Now, you want to keep Thomas in the organization? I'm totally cool with that. But I'm not going to judge him on the next five games because, for me, that's a micro look. I'm taking a macro look. What do I have to do to fix my shitty culture? He said it himself at his first press conference as head coach. He said, yeah, we've got some divisions in the room. Things didn't go well. We got to meld and bring everybody back together and heal. Okay, that's all well, fine. I can't trust. He may be great. Maybe he is, as someone said, the next Mike Tomlin. Awesome. I'm taking that chance with the golden ticket at quarterback. I can't do that. What if he uh, and the Bears win uh, three out of the remaining five games? And then you, of course, have to give him an interview. Uh, and, and he comes to you, a Cap, and he comes to Bears management and says, okay, here is who I would bring in as offensive coordinator. I've already talked to him. Here's I would bring in as my quarterback coach, a quarterback whisperer. And, and he starts to make a convincing case about the staff, the supplemental people who are going to develop Caleb, like he talked about uh, in that soundbite, would you then perhaps reconsider him as head coach? I probably would not because, again, you know, if you told me we've got some, you know, 34-year-old veteran and he's playing quarterback, okay, we could work our way toward developing our head coach. This kid's a rookie. And I get one bite at the apple to make sure that's my guy for the next 10 to 15 years. And I got to trust him based on a five-game sample where if we're really fair about this, and I think he would agree, if we're really fair, they scored 19 points against Green Bay. That was enough to win one other game that week in the National Football League. Minnesota, you're down 24 to 10. And you come with a furious comeback back, which was much more off-platform stuff rather than, wow, did you see how the offense was changed and looked? Then you played Detroit. You got shut out with the worst offensive performance of the season in the first half. So it's not as though everything was, oh, my God, do you see what the Bears look like now? No, I can't give them the job. Okay. Uh are you in favor of potentially looking into a trade for a head coach? I know Kevin Fishbane wrote about it in The Athletic today. A bunch of Bears bloggers have been speculating about what that would look like. What do you say? Would you give a call to find out about the head coach over in San Francisco or over in Minnesota to see if they would like to make a trade? A hundred percent. Now, I don't think Minnesota is going to trade you, Kevin O'Connell. I don't in the division. That would stun me. I'd love to have him or Matt LaFleur or Dan Campbell, any of the other three in the division. Now, if San Francisco ends up deciding we're not giving Brock Purdy 60 or $62 million, we're going to blow this thing up. We're going to get rid of Trent Williams and Ayuk and McCaffrey's gone because he's so injury prone and is all banged up again. And they decide, you know what, Kyle Shanahan, you don't want to be part of a rebuild. We're taking this thing back down to the ground and building it back up. Yeah, I would absolutely be willing to give them good, solid draft capital to acquire who I think is a really good football coach. If Sean McVay says, I got a 36 or 37-year-old quarterback, we're going to rebuild in Los Angeles. I want out and I want to go somewhere else. I'll coach Caleb Williams. In. Let's go. I would absolutely consider that. Uh Pittsburgh's not going to let Mike Tomlin get away, but I would call. There's probably 10 jobs that I would call and see, can I get that guy? And if I could, I'd absolutely be open to making a deal. Do you think Caleb Williams has been hurt by the dysfunction that is the Chicago Bears organization? Wow, that's a really good question. I don't think so because guys I talked to on that team have said, this cat's different. He is absolutely strong-minded and able to handle all the adversity that's come his way, the sacks, everything. But that's why you have to get someone with cachet who walks in here and says, okay, guys, shit's about to change here. It's going to be a little different. I remember I was telling this story on the radio at a hoodie this morning. My brother and I went up to Lake Forest. This is like 1982. 
My brother was a student at Lake Forest College. We go up there, Ditka is the new head coach. It's a gorgeous summer afternoon. They're up at the old Lake Forest College Hallis Hall, and Ditka is screaming at the team, and they're running sprints. And Noah Jackson, Buddha, number 65, big, huge gut, good player, though, at guard. He's lagging behind because Ditka's killing these guys in the hot summer sun. And he turns to the whole crowd. He goes, you see what Boo and Neil Armstrong got us? He guy's a maniac. And they ended up getting rid of him shortly thereafter. Yeah, uh, We need a guy with cachet who walks in and says, shit's about to change, guys. Here's yeah. good news. We're going to the Super Bowl. Bad news, a lot of you won't be there. <laughs> Famous Ditka uh, statement. Absolutely. Um, Cap, I'm interested in uh, learning what is your relationship like with the Chicago Bears? In other words, you know, I love the team. I, I'm angry at them. It's like, you know, one of my ex-wives. I loved her, but I was angry at her. Right. How do you feel about this Chicago Bears organization? And by the way, I have one of those, too. Um, <laughs> I, I Look, I love the Bears. I'm a big fan of Ryan Poles. I think he's a really good football guy. But I'm also angry with them that my kids, who I have made Bears fans, who are now in their 30s, 30, 31, 33, and 34. Those are my four sons. And all of them have said, thanks for making us Bears fans. We really appreciate it. We've seen very little in the way of success. Other than 2018, they mm -hmm. haven't seen, I believe, a winning season. Yeah. And so that's truly pathetically sad. Pathetically mm -hmm. sad. Because they were too young back in 06 when Olin and Erlacher and those guys were going to the Super Bowl. So they don't really remember that. But here we are now, and they're bad. But I love the Bears. It's in my blood, man. That's why I get so ticked off. People say to me, boy, I watched you on your recap. I heard you on ESPN 1000. Do you really get that mad? You're damn right I do. I take it that serious. When I get up on a Sunday, my son Brett and I are going to head downstairs and set all the TVs up with NFL Network and Red Zone and that game and this game. Hey, man, I'm into it. And when I'm standing there on Thanksgiving Day going, Paul, a godforsaken timeout, what are you doing? And I get beat red. My wife's like, hun, relax. You're not there. They can't hear you. Well, maybe they can because this is bullshit. Yeah. I love your passion. All right. In the last uh, few minutes that I got you, I'd like to uh, just do some rapid fire things. Who is the most disappointing player to you from this current Chicago Bears team? Most disappointing player from this current Chicago Bears team. That's a great question. I mean, in mass, I would say to you, the offensive line mm -hmm. would be the most disappointing position group. Uh, Look, Jalen Johnson was the number one ranked cornerback in on Pro Football Focus a year ago. This year, he's in the 30s. Highly disappointing season from him. I'd say to him, you're better than that. He's quick to run his mouth. Very entertaining. I listen to him. When he's on the score, he's great. When he speaks to the media in the press room, he's awesome. But you're a better player than what you've shown. Another one is Paul Komet. What are you doing blocking like a lineman down the field? I mean, he was, you know, ranked a top 10 guy a year ago. He's ranked 25th or 26th this year. You're better than that. And DJ Moore, DJ Moore got paid unbelievable money. He's a really good guy to deal with. He's ranked like in the high 20s, low 30s as a receiver this year. He was a top 15 guy a year ago. DJ, you're better than that. We've mm -hmm. seen these expressions where he's mad and he's sulking. And Come on, man. Pick your head up and let's go. So those would be three guys I would tell you I'm highly disappointed in. Great uh, names. Um, the, the next uh, person I'd like you to comment on is Bill Belichick. A lot of talk about maybe reaching out to him. Your thoughts? Uh, look, there's no doubt he's one of the five greatest coaches in the history of the sport. There's a bunch of names you could put in there, but he's on any list, whether it's Nick Saban or Bill Belichick. I mean, Bear Bryant, rest in peace. Like, there were some amazing coaches, Vince Lombardi. But my question would be, okay, you're 72. You got a 23-year-old girlfriend. You're posing at Halloween as a fisherman reeling in the mermaid, and she's laying on the beach in a mermaid outfit. How much energy do you have to do this? 
because I watched you at 52, 53, have a friend who played for him. He said, dude, that guy's a beast. That's all he does is work and learn football. Off season, he takes a little time for himself. But during the season, oh, my God, the, the, the depth of knowledge he had about every player on the other team was incredible. He was always studying, always watching film. Are you going to give me that guy? Or are you the guy with the Taylor Swift sweatshirt on with the smoking hot 23-year-old girlfriend? I don't know. I know I could. Br- I would bring him in for an interview. I think he's going to Jacksonville. I think that's the job he wants. But if he's coming in and interviewing in Chicago, I want him to be brutally honest. Coach, A, what's your energy level? B, I don't want you involved in personnel. If I bring you here, I want you to only coach the football team. And C, Tell me everything I need to know from the outside, what you think of how we do business here, and don't hold back. What is your happiest moment as a fan of the Chicago Bears? What memory immediately comes to mind when I say, do you remember this happy moment in your life as a Bears fan? Wow, that's a really good question. Obviously, 85, my brother and I, probably the night of the game in Minnesota when McMahon came off the bench. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I can tell you, we got beef sandwiches from Johnny's Beef and out in uh, either Melrose Park, River Forest. Right Love there, them. Park. Love them. Yes. Love them. And we're at, my brother was a student at Loyola Medical School at the time. And so he lived right on Harlem and North Avenue. So we ran out of Johnny's. We bought like a dozen sandwiches. He had a bunch of his buddies come over. And we're watching the game. And the Bears look lousy. And all of a sudden, there's McMahon. Tell the dick I can go in, and he finally does. And first two passes are touchdowns. Three of us first, like four. Touchdown, Chicago. We're going nuts. Yep. That's probably, other than the obvious, the Super Bowl, is my fondest memory, winning the NFC title with the snow coming down. Super cool as well. And beating San Francisco that season, 26-10, to 10, when he put William Perry in for the first time as a running back. Like, those are all amazing memories. And then the team – winning the NFC title at Soldier Field in 06 to get to the Super Bowl. Another super cool memory. Yeah, great stuff. Speaking of loving uh, Italian beef sandwiches, I got to tell you, my love for Lou Malinati's is because of you. When you did the, the uh, David Hall and your show on Comcast, you know, I like to have the TV on while I'm working. So I would watch it every morning. And a few times I called in. And one time I won a Lou Malinati's gift certificate. I said there you to my go. wife, we haven't eaten this stuff in years. Let's order it. And it came. And since then, we, oh, that's all we eat, Lou Malinati's pizza. We are devoted, lifelong fans of Lou Malinati's. Thanks to you. Oh, you're the man. I appreciate you saying that. I'm going to tell my wife, who's you know dedicated to almost 21 years of her career now, wow. still works for Lou Malnati's, and uh, they they're an awesome family to work for, and they do have the best pizza. I grew up on it. Yeah, I love it, man. And I love you, uh, David Kaplan. Thank you so much uh, for taking 25 minutes to talk with us. Uh, what's next for you that we can keep an eye on besides your ESPN 1000 show tomorrow morning? What time do you guys start again? Is it 7? We're on at 7 every day. So All we'll right. be on tomorrow. Tom Thayer will join us tomorrow. We have Tommy Waddle do football breakdowns on Wednesday. We have Tom Thayer on Thursdays. Uh, we'll have a whole lot of fun. Jonathan Hood and I, who I just adore that guy. He's the best. And then right here at the Recap YouTube channel, R-E-K-A-P. It's a free subscription. We've got... Almost 211,000 subscribers. We have content, you know, seven days a week. There's a ton of great stuff I think people would really enjoy. Take care, David Kaplan. Really appreciate you being here.